Hi, I'm Dr. Jonathan Rich. I'd like to welcome you to Psychopharmacology, Psychology 6700. And uh, this is my introductory lecture. You might be asking, why do psychotherapists study psychopharmacology? Well, it wasn't always like that. Up until the 1980s, psychologists and other psychotherapists were warned to completely leave psychopharmacology out of their sessions. Uh, if a client brought up medication, um, therapists were trained to say, take that up with your doctor, I can't discuss it with you. But things are much different now. Non-medical psychotherapists uh, now are not only uh, encouraged to discuss medication issues, but uh, uh, you need to be knowledgeable about psychopharmacology. Uh, one of the reasons for that change is that psychiatrists used to be both psychotherapists and psychopharmacologists. They'd have full responsibility for the case. Now it's more common for the non-medical therapist to have responsibility for coordinating a case. So you'll probably be the person to spend the most time with the client. And uh, in that role, you'll naturally be discussing and noticing medical issues. Some of the things that you'll learn in this class and that you need to know uh, as a non-medical therapist, you need to know when to refer clients to uh, psychiatrists and to primary care physicians. So you need to recognize issues that require medical assistance. You also need to know how to diagnose mental health problems, of course, uh, and to be able to discuss those intelligently with the client's physician. Uh, many times a primary care physician will be the person prescribing psychotropic medication, but he or she won't necessarily be well-versed in mental health diagnosis, so you can assist with that. Uh, you also need to have a good understanding of what the medical and non-medical treatment options are so that you can help the patient choose the best course of therapy. Now, I'd like to talk a little bit about what the expectations for this class are. Uh, as with all classes at Cal Southern, you'll need to do weekly discussion board entries. Uh, I'd like you to feel um, that you have some latitude with that. Uh, you want to focus on the topic for the week, but if there are other things that uh, you feel are interesting, things you've noticed in the news, uh, things that you've encountered uh, in your clinical work, please feel free to bring it up. And also um, try to respond to other posts so that you can get a discussion going. Uh, another assignment is case studies. You'll be asked to look at a brief scenario and to talk about how you would manage it as a non-medical therapist. So you're gonna be talking about what the issues are, possible diagnoses, how you'd come up with the diagnoses, and what would you, you would do in terms of referrals. Uh, you'll be asked to critique articles. Uh, so I'd like you to find articles that are relevant to psychopharmacology uh, from professional research journals and critique the methodology. Were there things that they could have done better and what's the take home points from the article? Uh, and then finally, there'll be a final paper. So in that final paper, uh, you'll be asked to uh, pick a diagnosis uh, such as major depression, bipolar, schizophrenia, and uh, review uh, what the literature on that diagnosis is, what the current thinking is, what causes it, and how it's treated. Uh, now, as far as administrative issues, I welcome contact from you, and usually the best way to do that is with email. So you can contact me uh, through the uh, Learner website or send me an email directly. Uh, feel free to ask trivial questions, small questions, and feel free to ask detailed questions. Either one is suitable for email. And if it's something that uh, I can't fully address, through email, then I'm happy to talk to you on the phone. Uh, I check email messages every day. If you don't hear from me after a day, it means that uh, the message got lost and to try again. So I'm excited about having you in the course and look forward to working with you.